populated woodpecker, osprey, tons of ducks and geese and seagulls, fog rising up from the lake. It's pretty awesome. How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato and first of all, I want to wish you a happy new year. Um, I know for me, last year just almost finished me, um, to say the least. It was really not an easy year and I'm going to do anything I can to make this be a better year. And I suggest you do the same. Um, it's the best we can do. But never forget to be good to other people. And as I said, always put your best foot forward. And if you don't have a best foot, make one. Enough of that, let's get on with the video. And what I'm about to show you in this video is a behavior that completely confuses me. I have no idea what's going on and I've tried looking it up and found no information whatsoever to date. Um, so I have a lot of theories, but none of them really convince me that that's what's going on. So, um, but first, let me say some other stuff about this insect. But I want to share with you a really cool wasp I found digging just outside my tent on a previous camping trip. This species here is the katydid wasp. And, you know, that explains why it's so big. This type of wasp actually goes out and hunts katydids and other types of crickets and things. If you know katydids, you are probably quite aware to the fact that they can get fairly large. I mean, they're among some of the largest insects in our region. You know, even without their wings, they could be rather robust and heavy. So these wasps, they have to be strong enough to not only neutralize their prey item, which has, you know, they have a venom geared specifically towards these other animals, which is why they don't want to waste it on anything else. But they also have to have the muscles, especially in the thorax where the wing muscles are, in order to carry these prey items back to the burrows. Not only that, then they actually have to dig the burrows. They have to be capable of picking up pebbles, you know, a quarter the size of their body and toss them aside like hay bales. And that's no easy task. There's a lot of muscle power there, but being insects, you know, they're already pretty strong for their size. They are parasitoid wasps. Now, the adults themselves don't feed on the prey items, but they're very crucial for their young or larva to develop. So much so that each species will focus specifically on certain types of prey. Like the cicada killers have to find cicadas to lay their eggs on. They can't exactly go, you know, harvest a beetle and lay the eggs on it because the larva can't feed on a beetle. Um, they're very specific. So if you have, say, a certain type of cricket hunter or caterpillar hunter, there's a sign that you either have a lot of crickets in the area or a lot of caterpillars. And if you're a gardener or a farmer, you want to see these wasps. I mean, it's unfortunate because it means, oh, there must be a lot of caterpillars here. But that also means the wasps are helping to protect your crops or your garden. And everything in nature is important. It has its niche. It belongs here, right? Mother Nature chose for these things to still be here, but they must be kept in check. And things like these wasps, and spiders and whatnot are part of the checks and balances of nature. You need the caterpillars, but you also need the things to keep them in check. So when they're not doing that or looking for mates, they actually spend their time feeding on nectar and various flowers, especially the mint family. And that makes them wonderful pollinators. If you find this type of wasp in your garden or on your property, do not fret. Don't do anything about it. Be happy that they're there because they're very beneficial and they actually take out a lot of the pests that feed on your, your plants and, you know, all those kind of things. I want to remind you that the Spessidae family are solitary wasps. So, you know, if you see one, chances are that's all you're going to see unless you see, like, you know, a mate looking to reproduce. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, where there's one, there's more or anything like that. And they're not aggressive at all. I've held these wasps so many times, not that I recommend you doing that, but you know, I've never been stung once by one of these. So about that strange behavior I was talking about, well, I've noticed that when these wasps are either looking for a new burrow or in the process of digging one, they let out these very loud, perceptible audio signals. I 
think the wasp is actually making this noise by stridulating parts of its abdomen um, or its wings. It actually sounds more like it's wings. But anyways, it's very curious to me, and I'd love to know. That's actually how I found the wasp. I heard it uh, making these noises, and I moved in for a closer look to see where they were coming from. Like a high-pitched buzzing that sounds almost agitated, but I don't think they are. And I have no idea what's going on. I don't know if they're, like, potentially communicating with another, with a mate, you know, if there's a mate nearby, or if they're like, you know, there's no one else in this area, is there? Um, I don't know if they're just talking to themselves because they're really focused on the task at hand. Or maybe even they're doing that to see if there's something beneath the ground that's going to respond to let them know whether or not they should dig there. Maybe if there's an ant colony in the area, the ants quickly move and the wasp can perceive that. And she's like, oh, okay, I'm not going to dig here. Maybe it's a male wasp letting out the noise and, well, it can't be a male because I've seen it happening with females specifically. I'm really confused. If you happen to know why they're doing this or if you've heard it yourself from these type of, you know, specidae wasps, let me know what your theory is or what the answer is. Write it in the comments below or contact me on Facebook or Instagram or something because I'm just really curious and I love being curious about nature, but after a while I start looking things up and if I don't find the answers, it makes me think more. And sometimes that keeps me awake all night long. I want to thank you for watching. If you ever have the opportunity to see a type of digger wasp, don't be frightened by its alarming size. Um, just stop and appreciate it. You can actually get so close to them. I've pet their heads, I've given them water on the tip of my fingers, and they gladly drink it up. But you don't want to get stung by one of these, you know. I've been doing this my whole life, so I understand body language. Um, just stop and appreciate the animal. Maybe take some photographs of it and watch its behavior. The Hemenoptera, you know, bees and wasps and ants and sawflies, you know, that's my favorite group of invertebrates out there. So anytime I see one, it brings a smile to my face. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.